So, welcome back to another episode. And I tell you, some of these episodes are making me feel old. I tell you, Final Fantasy 3 turning uh, 20 years old. I was like, I remember when that first came out. Same for here. The Turbo Graphics a couple of days ago turned 25 years old when it was released in North America. And for me, at that time, it was 1989. I was in grade 9. And not a lot of people were talking about it, let me tell you. I know, I know this machine has been forgotten about quite a lot in time, and I'm a big advocate for it. I love the Turbo Graphics. But when I was in high school, nobody was talking about it. Everybody was talking about the Genesis and all that kind of stuff, but this kind of machine got pushed to the side. I, I don't think NEC uh, had a, a, a lot of advertising dollars. They had a lot, but it wasn't enough to make this become uh, a, a much known about mainstream system. So it became very underground and so much so that I was the only person who was excited about this. Uh, there was another guy in school, I remember walking to school with him and we were talking about it like secretly as we were talking about the secret system. And he's like, oh, I'm gonna get Dragon Spurt for it and blah, 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 blah. And we were very, very excited. So the core machine was coming out and I brought out the clamshell today and I'm not gonna talk about the CD uh, system. I've talked about about that quite a lot over the years. I want to talk about the main Turbo Graphics machine, and here is the original box for the Turbo Graphics. This is what it came in. This is what it looked like back in the day. Love that CRT TV there. <laughs> uh, this was it, and it came with. Let me just open up my. This is for the big CD unit. But all right, let's just take this out. There we go. This is the original Turbo Graphics. This is what it looked like. It's kind of unusual, isn't it? And at the time, what was unique about it, all the games were on credit card size cartridges. This was a cartridge. It was a credit card size. And you slid it in, and you clicked, play. That was it. You didn't have to download anything back then. It just played. So that was what was unique about this. And this was a, this is a great system, very simple. Um, uh, for technical wise, it wasn't a true 16-bit system. It was really an 8-bit system, but I don't hold it against it. Now, here was the controller. And what I liked about the controller, it came with turbo buttons. So you could flick this on, so you could just hold this down and get your turbo right there on there. I, I really enjoyed that. The only problem with the turbo graphics was it only came with one controller port. So what you needed was your turbo tap. Uh, so you click this in uh, to right here, and then you could have up to five controller ports. So you could plug in uh, more controllers on there. So you could play some multiplayer games like, you know, Dungeon Explorer and stuff like that. So, so what did the system come with? It came with uh, just the controller, uh, just the machine itself, and this game here, Keith Courage and Alpha Zones. Let me tell you something here. I know there's a few people out there that this on Keith Courage, they want to, you know, bash on it. Keith Courage was an amazing game at that time. When you bought the Turbo Graphics and it came free, so you can complain. It was like buying the Genesis and getting Altered Beast. You know, it was a short game. You got through it really quickly, but it showed you the potential. At the time, you were playing on the NES. You were playing like Super Mario Brothers, which was great, but you could see the jump in graphical quality, and that was going from the NES to the Turbo Graphics, it looked good. It looked well, it looked like an arcade game, and uh, people were really excited about that. I was really excited about that, but uh, it wasn't. People weren't talking about it, and I want that to be known. It's been 25 years, and I don't want to give you all the technical information on all this. That's really irrelevant. I want to give you what it was like when it came out 25 years ago. It was cool, but it was underground, and they only sold it at like Radio Shack and these little places. It wasn't a mainstream system. You know, nobody at the time was talking about it. As I said, there was one guy I walked to school with. He was talking about it. Me and him were talking about it. That was it. And uh, people just didn't care. I don't know what it was. Uh, if something like this happened now, maybe there would be a bit more interest in it. The games were pretty good. Look at some of these games on the side. Vigilante. Which was a great side view game. Uh, Victory Run, which was a great first-person uh, racing game back then. 
and world-class baseball, which looked good because you had the ball that, you know, you'd knock it out of the stadium and it'd go into like 3D towards you, which, that was a big deal. So, it just, it's still, it's one of those things that's it's 25 years later and I'm always pissed. Because this is based on the PC Engine in Japan. And the PC Engine in Japan was doing extremely well. Extremely well. So they're like, hey, let's bring this over to America. It'll do extremely well. No, it didn't do extremely well over here. And, uh, and I think I was always bummed about it. And there was such good advertising for it. Like, there really was. It was in every single video game uh, magazine. This is from GamePro, 1990. Like, the, the, the advertisements were there. The games were there. And there was a lot of games in Japan that just never got brought over. There was a promise of many games uh, to get brought over. Like, Australia's was an RPG that never got brought over. Far East of Eden was another great RPG that I love. But that never got brought over, so... Yeah, it's kind of like, it's a sad 25 years looking back for me because I enjoyed this machine so much. And now I'm going to talk about some of the games. I talked about Keith Courage. People, you know, there's some people out there bashing him. No, Keith Courage was great at the time. My next uh, game that I played, I picked up, was a game that I, I think at the time I was like, oh, it's a caveman game, I don't think I'll like it. I loved it. Legendary Axe, side view platformer game where you power up your axe and, you know, you bite in prehistoric times against monsters and, you know, all this kinds of stuff. Bears and, oh my god, all, all this great stuff. What a wonderfully uh, controlling game. Like, you, it was really, really, the, res the controls were very responsive and very, very excellent. Another great game. Uh, this is from the Wonder Boy series. It was called Dragon's Curse on the Turbo Graphics. I've talked about this game quite a bit, so I won't go into a lot of detail about that. Newtopia. The TurboGrafx answer to Zelda. And it was a good one, I bought this. And, and that's something else I just want to get into. I had a job uh, at, at, for the, the, the summers that I wasn't in school doing drywalling. I cleaned up the drywall. I was a young kid, I wasn't, you know, I wasn't good enough to, to actually do it. So I was cleaning it up, all this stuff. And I saved up my money to buy the core unit of the TurboGrafx and I bought Newtopia. And I was so happy with Neutopia. I remember playing that and like going, wow, this is like a next generation Zelda game at that time. So you gotta put everything into perspective of when it came out. This was a really big deal. Military Madness. The great thing about this, I talked about this in my uh, top 10 uh, console strategy games. I got this in a used bin for like $10. And I'd already been playing it at my friend's place, but I was like, oh, I can get my own copy now. Holy fuck. Totally addicted to this. Totally addicted to this. What a great strategy game, like Advance Wars. Really good stuff. I played with my friend Swagger all the time. Like, got nothing good but the good things to say about Military Madness. Dungeon Explorer. This was a big deal game because this used the TurboTap. So you and a few friends could sit and play uh, an overhead action uh, RPG. And it was fun. It was a lot of fun. I. I didn't get the turbo trap till later, and then I never had enough controllers to have everybody. And I always, I, I got, I got one of these back in the day. This is a great. This is the turbo stick. And look at this. This is like the arcade experience at home. It was really nice, and you had your turbo buttons on there. Your slow, uh, select, and run. Very nice. I, so yeah, but it was, it was nice to, to, to be able to play with your friends using the multi tap to play a game like Dungeon Explorer, and that's where the turbo stick really came into, to play. Another great game, Vigilante, trying to save Madonna. <laughs> Side view game like Kung Fu, very, very fun. Uh, a little bit difficult, but fun. It's funny, these are my my American uh, versions of, of games, and you're like, oh, but there's so many more, where's, where's your copy of Bonks and all that? I got those years later, so I didn't, I want to talk about my initial games that I got, uh, you know, back in the day. But uh, I don't want to go full on into the CD, to go into the CDs too easy. Uh, but I did pick up Cosmic Fantasy 2, Fighting Streets, Dragon Slayer, great game. Oh, Final Zone 2! And Last Alert, which I'll do a huge review on very, very soon. I have all the footage captured. It'll be a gem for sure. But this is such a, it's such a great, I could spend hours talking about this machine. I really could talk about every single aspect of it because I really, this, is from my generation. This is a, a machine that I grew up loving and and I was the guy in the neighborhood. I told you it wasn't that popular. Everybody would come over to my house 
and I, I, it was almost like a religion. I was this religious cult member spewing the, the love of the Turbo Graphics. I'm like, come my brothers, please feel the love of the Turbo Graphics. You know, touch the great holy grail of vigilante and yeah, stuff like that. I was always the guy giving the praise to the Turbo Graphics, and I felt like he back then you kind of needed to to be a bit of that uh, the Turbo Graphics cult leader because there wasn't that many in school. There was not many for me in high school. I could honestly say there's probably three other people who had a Turbo Graphics. That's crazy. That's really crazy. When they came, dropped in price later on and when the Turbo Duo came out, a couple more people jumped on, but it just, it never, it never got the love that the Nintendo got, that the Genesis got, or the Super Nintendo came out a few years later, that got, but it's one of those ones that, it's been 25 years, I, I just, man, I want to show some love to this machine and, you know, if you're interested in some of the games, go, go get the ROMs. Uh, a lot of the games nowadays are very, very expensive. To, 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 to buy, unfortunately, the original TurboGrafx games. TurboGrafx collection, uh, collecting is crazy, okay? I only know a couple of people with complete collections like Chris Bucci, uh, you know, uh, that's just the craziest thing to have a complete TurboGrafx collection. Some of those games go for thousands now. So, uh, uh, it's funny, and so, yeah, did I get a lot of later TurboGrafx games and stuff like that? Yes, but that's for another episode. I have, a, I am a huge PC Engine collector. Massive, crazy PC Engine collector. I've decided to collect for the PC Engine. I, I, I said I was gonna start doing this a couple years ago when I started, and I have a lot. So, you know, for all the games that I don't have here, I got the PC Engine versions of, and I got a lot of them, and I'll do an entire episode on the PC Engine because I love that too, so. Guys, I know this is a machine that probably did not come from your generation. Maybe you're hearing about it for the first time today and saying, what the fuck is the TurboGrafx? Well, I'll tell you what the TurboGrafx was. It was a very important machine in history, one that never caught on, but did get a cult audience. You know, people like myself, look at me, you know? I am fanatical about this machine. It just brings up so many happy memories. There were so many great times playing it, you know? Getting great things like the Turbo Play magazines. You know, like, look at this stuff. The Lords of Thunder. Oh, man. Too many great stuff, uh, too many great things in here. And I, I found something else, I was digging through my closet. This is my last thing I'll show. The Turbo Graphics and Turbo Express Secrets. Yeah, sure. And there was a handheld version of this, the Turbo Express. Uh, I didn't dig that one up, uh, unfortunately, for this episode, because I just wanted to talk about the core unit, the core Turbo Graphics system. And later on, it got a turbo CD attachment and made things all the more better. So, guys, that's my 25 years looking back on the turbo graphics and <sighs> love this machine. So, anyways, guys, till next time.